Hi, this is Mike Phelpson from the Microsoft Education Team, and today we're going to be talking about reading progress. And I'm joined with a special guest who's been using this in the classroom. Hello, my name is Jennifer Cycli Moreno. I'm from Fontana. I currently teach fifth grade, um, and I have taught first and third grade um, in the past. So let's start with Crystal. Crystal's in fourth grade, and she has to do fluency checks. She doesn't necessarily like reading out loud in front of the teacher like many students don't. They can make her nervous. And so Crystal really doesn't look forward to doing these fluency checks. On the other hand, you have Miss Peterson. She's the fourth grade teacher. She obviously cares a lot about reading fluency and she checks Crystal's fluency on a regular basis along with the rest of the class. The challenge is that she has to use paper, stopwatch, and good old pencil. Crystal reads the passage. Miss Peterson sits and focuses intently. While Crystal's doing that, maybe she's been pulled out into the hallway. Miss Peterson has to do that 27 times. I've talked to teachers who have to do it 35 times if they have a larger classroom. And of all the teachers we interviewed, most of them would say, ugh, like, I know it's important, but it's really time consuming. As an educator, they have to focus intently as the students are reading. So we said, how can we help Crystal practice more often? And Miss Peterson can get reading fluency checks happening at a much more regular basis. We've talked to many educators that say, I want to do it more. I just don't have the time. And then how can we get insights back to Miss Peterson? That's where we have reading progress in Teams. This is a free tool built into all versions of Teams, works on any platform, reading practice and review software, and it's targeted at new struggling readers. And as we'll hear later, all sorts of other readers. It's not just for K through five. The other thing is during the pandemic, large scale Stanford studies showed that reading fluency in early grades is 30% lower. Doing reading fluency checks during a pandemic is even more difficult or impossible than it would be compared to in person. So let's show a quick video of a school in Tacoma, Washington, who's been part of the private preview and let's see how they've been using reading progress. Literacy is so important and it's my job to help the kids grow in that and to see the value in that and to break the mindsets of like, oh, I'm just a bad reader. I don't like to read. I don't have to worry about other people just looking at me and staring at me. It's just reading to myself sort of, but on camera. When I came across reading progress, I was able to say, hey, I've assigned a passage to each and every one of you guys. At your reading level, I want you to record you reading this passage. I was surprised that when the whole class came back literally within 10 minutes, everyone was already done. Having that recording, I'm able to spend ample amount of time to analyze. And instead of using my instructional time, it allows me to use my planning time to figure out how do I intentionally approach every student, the whole class, this is what I'll teach them, and maybe this one specific individual student, I need to address with him or her this specific area. Reading progress has really motivated a lot of kids to work harder and kind of gave them ownership of their learning. Well, as a mother and an educator, you know that the conference with the student is the most powerful piece. It's not necessarily them reading and recording. It's what you do with that reading and with that recording. And she's able to capitalize on that even faster now. It probably helps me be a better reader because I can actually listen to myself. And if I did say a word wrong or something, I'd be able to say it better than next time because I know that I said it wrong. Struggling readers, they struggle, so they avoid reading. And by avoiding reading, they struggle even more. Um, and so it's been really cool to watch how my kids are you know, reading more at home. They're more excited to read in the classroom. They have their personal goals that they've made, not me. And so they're excited to work. Coming from an administrative perspective is that this isn't just a classroom tool. Because we have so much access to data that this is a powerful tool to change the learning trajectory of a building. But watching her grow in her reading, it's been a, a joy for me. I used to love reading as a child, and I wanted that for her. Now that we use the app, I'm more confident. I'm less worried about it. I get worried about a lot of things, but reading now is one of the things that I'm not worried about anymore. I want all of my students to, to get to the point where they know what it feels like to get lost in a book. 
favorite part is when I get to a really interesting part in the book and then I can't stop reading it and it's really fun. So that gives you a sense of how reading progress in teams works, but better yet, we have Jennifer Moreno from Fontana School District in California, and I've been working personally with Jennifer. She's been an early adopter. She's had some great feedback for the tool, and she's going to talk about how she's been using it in her classroom. So the teacher point of view is, I think you're going to love it. Um, first of all, it grades automatically, and you can also have a grade of uh, the option of manually grading the fluency passages. This is going to save so much time, and as teachers, we know that time is very valuable. You're not going to be able to have to worry about the kids uh, in the background with all the distractions. Uh, you're, you're, you know, the students, when you're actually recording them, when you're grading them, they're not going to have to feel pressured. The students won't feel pressured. The, the students themselves who are taking and reading this fluency passage won't feel distracted from the other students who are listening on them from the background. The comfort um, of the students being able to themselves uh, change the font, adjust the background color is amazing to fit their needs. I had a student who needed a cover overlay to, um, unfortunately we didn't have that color overlay and we had to print every single thing on a blue paper that way she was able to um, read all of her work. And it'll also give this, the students themselves the opportunity to find what best works for them. You'll be able to have the audio and visual of the reading. And as teachers, we know that visual, the visuals are amazing. The color coding is amazing. Uh, you'll be able to see the omissions, the insertions, the repetitions, self-corrections, all on one page. You'll be able to hear them as well. Um, here is a little clip of the student reading. Again, Nathan. Nathan was the only kid who was out with a snow shovel, offering to clear it. Being able to hear this visual, uh, being able to hear this and actually having the visual to go along with it really does help. Um, the, the actual reading progress with the color coordination does really help for reading chats. Um, you can have your students go ahead and, you know, meet up with them and they can, you can talk about all of the different things of where they're struggling with the multiple, the multisyllabic words, or if they're short vowel words, it's all visible for them to be seen, or it's all visible for, for you guys to see as teachers. And what, what's great about it is that you can use it for what's called uh, SITS, um, student, you know, student intervention uh, teams. You can use it, you know, psychologists can look at it, this, the parents can see it during conferences, and it's all there for them to see. And here's a little example of it. Uh, you can see that the students has a lot of omissions or insertions right there. He has a couple repetitions. And so you'll be able to visually see this and it's going to be one of those time-saving programs. It's quick and easy for the reading of the data. Like I said over here on the next slide, I'll go ahead and show you guys a few other information about the data chart. I, <laughs> I had given my students a story called the destruction of Pompeii. And I didn't realize it was going to be very hard for them. It was a fifth grade uh, passage from their curriculum. And right away, just hearing them, I was able to see that they struggled with it. And that's something I wouldn't grade as a teacher. You know, if 80% if, uh, of your class does not pass, then uh, the teacher did something wrong. So that's not a passage that I would actually grade. It does save that time where I didn't personally correct every single one and, and see all these mistakes as we went along. This is the data that I was talking about earlier. Right here, you can see that you'll see the challenging words, which is like a word cloud, and visible for them to also see if you have your word, your reading chats. You can say, hey, you know, we we're struggling with the multisyllabic words or short vowels or long vowels. This is very visible for them to see. Here, you're going to see a line graph, and it actually tells you her story. You can see it for this for the, the group itself, all of your students as a whole, how are they doing? Or you can do it individual. And this is, of course, the, a bar chart of where you can look into this and see the, the omissions, insertions, and mispronunciations. And it gives you all of that information. And uh, but gone are the days where you have to sit for hours at a time and just grade every child individually with all the distractions going on in the background. Thanks, Jennifer. And that was really cool to see how it's being used in your classroom. Now what I'm going to do is go in an in-depth demo of how reading progress works and I'm going to show all the different capabilities. So let's switch to the demo. I'm here in a fourth grade class and we're going to go to assignments. 
and we'll go here and click the Create Assignment button. We'll give our assignment a title and some instructions. Now we'll click Add Resources. For those of you that are using the private beta, you're going to see Reading Progress enabled right here. Now I'm going to click this. Now these are the different settings for the reading passages. The first thing to do is upload your reading passage. Now right now we only support English. We're going to be adding more and more languages in the future, but for now in the private beta it's English only. And you have to use a Word document. And just a note, we are adding PDF support, so you'll be able to upload a PDF very soon. And later in the summer, we're going to have some sample content to choose from as well. But for now, you have to upload a Word document, so I'll do that really quickly. There's my Word document attached. Then you can enter the reading level. So for example, I can enter anything I want. If I have reading levels A through Z, I could enter J. If you have a different reading level system, this is yours to choose from. So enter whatever system that you use for that reading level. You can set genre, so in this case it's going to be nonfiction. Number of attempts, so by default it's unlimited, but I could set, hey, I only want them to try it four times, I don't want them to do it unlimited, but I will leave this as unlimited. And then pronunciation sensitivity. I like to call this the picky dial. How picky did you want the software to be? If you're going to use auto detect to listen to the students read, you can set how sensitive it is. So for example, if I have really young readers, I might want to set this to less sensitive. If I have much more experienced readers, I could set it to more sensitive. We'll leave it at standard default. Lastly, require video. You don't have to have the student have video. You can have audio only. So right here it says selecting no gives the students the choice to submit audio only. So if I set that to no, then the student would record their audio out loud and submit it. But I will leave it to yes, so they'll record video and audio. And we're ready to attach this, so click attach. Now the passage is attached. I could give points, I could add a rubric, I'm going to keep it simple here, and it's going to go out to my whole fourth grade class. Again, with Teams, you could say I just want to send it to certain students, but I'm going to leave it to all students, and I will click Assign. Now I'll switch over to the student and show what that looks like on the student side. Now we're showing the student side, and I'm going to go down here, and here is that assignment geography, open that up, and you're going to see a special little icon next to geography. I will click this. Now we have Zoe here and she's gonna start reading this passage. One other thing, we have immersive reader technology so Zoe can change the way the page looks so it's more comfortable for her to read. So we're gonna quickly show what that looks like and then Zoe will start reading. Let's go. The study of Earth's landforms is called physical geography. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. People need water to drink. They also need it for washing. Through history, people have settled near fresh water. Now Zoe's done with the reading. She can click the little play button on her video to watch and listen to herself read. The study of Earth's landforms is called physical geography. She can also click the start over button if she wants to give it another try. But in this case, she's all done. She's going to click I'm finished and it'll upload the video. Now the video is uploaded and attached to this reading progress assignment. And now just like a normal Teams assignment, I'll go in the upper right and click turn in. Now we'll switch back to the educator view and show how the review student work portion works. I'm signed back in as the educator and I switched over to assignments and here are the ones that I've made. I'm going to open this one and now I'm going to review the student work. So I will click on the student here. Now we're in the teacher review experience. This is the normal speed grader on the right hand side, but we've replaced everything else with our reading progress experience. You see the passage here and it's marked up. You can see words per minute. Right here is the accuracy rate, the number of attempts, the level, and the number of words. By default, we've turned on auto detect, and that is the speech process that listens for things like mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, repetitions, and self corrections. A really important note you don't have to use auto detect. I can turn this off, but we'll demonstrate with auto detect on first, and then I'll show it with auto detect off. Now I'll start by playing the video of the student reading. The study of Earth's landforms is called physical geography. So you can see it marked physical as a mispronunciation. So it auto detected that the student said that word incorrectly. I'll hit play again. 
Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. Now I'll hit pause and I'm gonna jump down to a different section. Right here, it looks like region was mispronounced. So what I can do is click on this and I can choose jump to word and watch what happens. Reggae and reg are often. So I can jump to the word and see the video and hear it. Maybe there is another word like the and it was actually correct. I can click here and choose mark as correct and it will unflag it. We also detect omissions. So in this case, it looked like she skipped a few words right here. Let's see what happens. I'll click on borders and then choose jump to word. Borders, freshwater source. It looked like she skipped those three words. So that was automatically flagged by our auto detect feature. A newer feature we've added based on educator feedback has been the ability to detect repetitions. So we flag those with blue. So right here, it looks like she repeated this word. Let's jump to the word and check it out. Feature, features of. Yep, so she repeated that word. We also have self-corrections. Many times a student will mispronounce the word but then catch themselves and pronounce it correctly. And this is something that many educators have requested. So I'll go to combination here and jump to word. Com bin, combination of factors that people use to do. So it catches those self corrections as well. Another nice thing is that I can make the video full screen. So I'll click here to go full screen and hit play. Also influence where people settle, people need water to drink. And then if I click this button here, I go back to normal screen. That lets you really see how the student is reading. You can get a close up, you can watch the mouth movements, whatever might be helpful in identifying what's happening. I can also change the pronunciation sensitivity. I can change it from medium or I can push it up to high. So if I put it onto high, it actually marks more words incorrect. And I've set it back to medium. Like I mentioned before, you can turn off auto detect. So in this case, I'm gonna turn this off. Maybe I just wanna watch the video and listen and mark things up. So now I'll hit play. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle Okay, geography. there's a mispronunciation. Landforms can be mountains. And, and I can go here and maybe I'm going to mark through. And as I'm listening, I can mark all those different things specifically. So I can go and manually mark up this just like I might use with paper and pencil and stopwatch. Now it is just digital. And as I mark up these different mispronunciations and other aspects, you can see that the accuracy rate updates automatically. I can add feedback just like I would in a normal Teams assignment. So I can go over here and say, great job. I can add other details for things that I might want her to work on. And then I can click return, just like I would in a normal assignment. And then I can drop this down and go to the next student, just like I would in this speed grader. The last piece I'm gonna show are insights and analytics. So all of this data is captured and put into our insights tool, which I will demo next. Now I've closed the assignment and we're gonna speed ahead and I have a bunch of different reading passages that I've already assigned. Now what we're gonna do is go into insights and look at these dashboards. To add insights, go to the top and click plus and you're gonna search for insights. I'll click insights here and then what I'll do is I'll go and click save. This will add an insights tab into your class team and we're gonna drill in here. Now we're in the insights area for my class team. It has all sorts of insights and data about what's happening in my class, including assignments and student activity. The bottom here, you're gonna see reading progress has shown up and this will happen automatically if you've made reading progress assignments. Now let's go click here on reading progress to drill in. Here's the main reading progress dashboard and I'll go full screen. These are our first dashboards, but expect these to improve over time. We have average words per minute and I can hover over a different assignment and see what is happening all the way from here to here to here. Next, I have average accuracy rate. I can hover over to get more details, so mispronunciations, omissions, and insertions, and this is across the whole class I'm seeing right now, and I can hover. If I go to students, I can drop this down. Maybe I wanna go down to Alex Wilbur. Now the data is redrawn just for Alex, and I can see different types of average words per minute for Alex, as well as his accuracy rate. I can also drill down to see this month versus the last 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. Let's go back to all students. If you've added reading levels, I can drop this down and now I can filter by those reading levels that we added when we first created the assignment. So if I wanna look at all the J passages, there were four passages signed with the J reading level. And I can also drill down by students just like we did before. So here is Arden and the J passages that he has read. Let's go back to all students. 
The last area is the word cloud. So if I scroll down here, I can see the challenging words and we have the size of the word here represents how many people had challenges with it. So if I look at physical, it looks like there were mispronunciations nine different times. There are some other words like strawberries and Olympics that people are having challenges as well. I can also filter on a specific student. So I'll go here and filter on Arden. Now the word cloud redraws for Arden and you can see he was having problems with the word Olympics. So this is really handy to see who's having problems across a class or looking at specific students like we are here with Arden. So that should give you a sense of how reading progress works. Now for those of you that are wondering, hey, has Microsoft just been inventing random stuff here? The answer is no. We've been working with hundreds of educators iterated for a couple of years on this. We've worked with top reading experts like Dr. Tim Rosensky, who's kind of the the legendary reading fluency professor in the United States, Dr. Mark Seidenberg. We've talked to Timothy Shanahan, Pam Allen. So we've really run it by educators, literacy experts, and reading scientists, and we've iterated. And there's a lot of research to support the tool as well. The other thing I want to make sure people understand is that it's not just for K through 5. Yes, it's working fantastic in K-5, and we had first grade teachers using it. You know, Jennifer is a fifth grade teacher. It's also being used for middle school fluency checks, high school fluency checks, special education. It's being used with English language learners, also world language teachers. Think about practicing different languages and hearing your students read out loud and seeing them read out loud. That's typically just not something that can be done right now. Even adult literacy, we're doing pilots with adult literacy. In the U.S., there's 30 million low literacy adults, and this is a great tool because it turns out not only do many fifth graders don't like reading out loud in front of an adult, 32-year-olds don't like reading out loud in front of adults either. Most of us don't. And so this tool has wide-ranging possibilities, and we encourage you to explore them. Now we're going to have Jennifer come back on and talk about some of the specific feedback she's been hearing from her students and some of the learnings that she's had by using this tool. So with what I do with my fifth grade students, I have them um, write to me what they thought about the program you know, on a OneNote collaboration space page. And as you can see here, a lot of the students said, I like it uh, because you can redo your recording and change the color um, of the page to a dark color if you need to. Um, another student said it's pretty cool because I think it's not too hard to do. I like how only your teacher can see it and not other students. And I had, I have heard um, that from many of my other students that it gave them that privacy um, to be able to say it to themselves, read it to themselves. Nobody else was hearing them. The students weren't hearing them or judging them. Um, and in the past, when we did have to do it one on one, a lot of the kids did hear the person reading um, and they were able to see, you know, the teacher making those corrections. And it, it, was, it added a lot of pressure onto the kids. A lot of my students um, lo love the fact that they were able to re-record themselves because they had the, the empowerment to say, all right, I messed up. I didn't do so well on this one. Let me go back and redo it. I think I can do better. This young man was featured in the article uh, for Reading Progress, and he says, I think the Reading Progress is uh, a great and simple tool. It is very easy to use and you can redo your video as many times as you want, which is a really great feature. Even better, the video is only visible to your teacher, which makes the reading progress comfortable to use. You'll find you'll, the best you'll find out there. Um, and I, I chose him to be interviewed because he was able to, to see the growth that he can make using the, pro the, the program. And he was able to say, all right, I know I can do better. Let me try to do this a little bit better. Um, so as you can see here, the students loved it. And, you know, the team themselves, they were very, very open to um, whatever suggestions we gave them as teachers. And they were able to implement them because they realized that the teacher's time is valuable and um, that we do need something a little bit easier to use in the classroom. Uh, which is going to save us a lot more time and this by far is the best thing that i've ever used and i've already pitched it to my my district is actually using this um, a lot and they all have it embedded in their program on their their teams uh their teams app and so they're they're using it and they're seeing the benefit of this thanks jennifer now we're just going to wrap up with next steps and roadmap reading progress is going to be available to everyone in the world in late august 
And also before we ship this, we're going to add PDF support for reading passages, some sample content in ReadWorks, and then also video support on iOS or Android. You can see those are going to be coming out this summer. Also, if you want early beta access to reading progress right now, either for yourself or your entire school, send me an email right here and I can get you hooked up with a private beta. We have lots of resources here, public resources. And so this whole deck is going to be available as well. Feel free to check out any of these resources and share them. Here's a link to the deck. You can get the URL right here, QR code, mail me, tweet me out.